Um, she doesn't really need an introduction, but I will do one anyway. Um, it's Maria Namazi, who is co-spokesperson for One Law For All and Council of Ex-Muslims of Britain and FITMA. Uh, she currently hosts a weekly television program called Bread and Roses. She's on the International Advisory Board of the Rafe Badawi Foundation for Freedom, uh, National Secular Society Honorary Associate, and many, many others. Um, the Islamic regime of Iran's media outlets has called her immoral and corrupt and did an expose on her entitled Meet This Anti-Religion Woman, which I'm sure she's devastated about. <laughs> Um, in 2016, she was awarded the International Secularism Prize from the Comité La Cité Republique and was honoured by the National Secular Society for her campaigning work defending free speech at universities. Um, there's so much I can say about her, but I'm sure she will say it all herself. So please, can we give a very, very warm welcome to Mariam Namazi. Yes, Oh, my lovely people, I am so happy to be here. I'm getting so emotional now. To see all of you here, it's such an honor to be with you and for us to be together at this event. So thank you for coming, thank you for being here. Um, I think it is really important for us to defend the right to leave and criticize Islam, especially when we can be killed for it. In 13 countries under Islamic rule, atheism is a crime that is punishable by death. So it's important for us, given these circumstances, to come out publicly, to stand together, to show, as Fireboard said earlier, that we are many, that there are many of us, and to celebrate, in fact, blasphemy and apostasy. Because when you can be killed for it, the only way to resist, one of the only ways, is to do it publicly and to celebrate the fact that you're not allowed to do it. To celebrate it, to fight for it until it becomes normalized. It is an important form of resistance. One of our speakers uh, from Afghanistan, whose name had to be removed from our list of speakers, was uh, uh, threatened in Afghanistan. The Taliban came to his house and told him they've heard he's speaking at this conference, so he and his family had to flee his home. Uh, we have another speaker, Ismail Mohammed from Egypt, who got a visa, though a couple of people didn't get visas from the British government, who got a visa but was stopped by Egyptian authorities at the airport. He was supposed to be on the first panel, and he has not been able to come. So he was questioned for many hours about this conference and the speakers and what, what we intend to do. Uh, and of course, many of you right here, you know, people who fled your countries because you've been threatened, you've been abused, you've, you've, uh, you're facing blasphemy and apostasy laws, people who've uh, had shun shunning from their families, who've lost their loved ones to suicide or despair, who've done self-harming, who felt alone. And I think one of the other important things about this conference is to say that we're not alone. There are so many of us. And I think when we see that, it brings hope. And hope is really one of the greatest forms of resistance against a movement that is so dark and bleak and desperate and tries to take away any hope from human beings. I think it's important for us to remind the world that rights do not belong only to the religious. The freedom of conscience includes, of course, the right to religion, but it also includes the right to reject religion. Freedom of expression is not just for believers. It includes the right to criticize religion, to poke fun at it, and unmercifully. Expressing these beliefs is not a crime. It is a crime, though, to incite hatred against apostates and blasphemers and LGBT like the East London Mocks does in this country, and it is a crime to punish people with the death penalty for leaving Islam and for criticizing it. That is the crime, not the demand to live and think and love as one chooses. And of course, we all know it's not bigotry. Islamophobia is a term that's being used in order to silence criticism, in order to impose de facto blasphemy laws where none exist. 
Thank you very much, but we don't need a lesson in racism. We live racism every day. But for those of you who say, and I'm talking to the world outside, who say that our criticisms are Islamophobic and racism, you need a lesson in racism. Because isn't it racist to say that people who come from the Middle East, from North Africa, from South Asia, from the diaspora, people who come from Muslim families, that we don't also have the right to think and live as we choose? Of course we do. Why must we only live within the confines of religion while you live any way you want? This week, we want to tell the world that it is possible to fight on several fronts. We can fight against racism. We can fight against Muslim profiling. We can fight for the rights of refugees. And we can fight for the right to leave and criticize religion, and especially Islam, without fear, without threats, and without intimidation. We call on the world to join us, to support us. Or step aside and let us do our work. We're fighting for ourselves, for our very lives. But more importantly, we're fighting for the many who cannot be here today, who are not allowed to speak, who are languishing in prison, who are on death row, people like Sina Dehqan in Iran and Raif Badawi in Saudi Arabia. We're honoring our dissenters like Avijit Roy, who cannot be here with, to, with us today because they have been murdered by the Islamist movement. We make no apologies. We will not live on our knees. We are the tsunami that is coming. Thank you.